Hello, I'm here today uh, to talk to you about your first reading, Chapter 1, and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about why I chose this book as a beginning. First of all, this, this book is titled Harnessing Technology, and I think when you think about technologies in business, this word harnessing means you somehow figure out how to leverage technology and you put it to use. Uh, so that's really the focus of what we want to talk about and how companies have put it to use, but also how individuals put technologies to use. So uh, this first discussion will be framed around our textbook chapter one, and I, I should say that there'll be times when I won't follow the reading directly and I try to add materials that are really relevant today and maybe extend what's being discussed in the text so you can get an idea of what may be playing out in the newspapers uh, about the competitive nature of business surrounding this uh, topic of harnessing technologies. So your first question is, can you really harness a technology? In your life, you've probably experienced the fact that technologies rapidly evolve and you kind of say, well, what products available today? And you tend to adjust your life accordingly. So think of that adoption of a mobile phone and how we sort of changed the way that we communicate and uh, instead of talking on the phone or using our landlines, we do a lot of texting and, and, and emailing and do things completely differently. So um, can you really harness these technologies? And then if someone is saying that you can, how do we really know that? What evidence is there that would be able to show us that we've harnessed technology? Well, one thing that I'd point to, and especially in some of the companies I've worked with, they have created new business models to be able to leverage technologies. So uh, I mentioned Apple, the way that iTunes uh, is set up to uh, provide a service to enable you to get music from the cloud, uh, and you don't have to store it in albums in the same way that we used to, be, used to have to do it before. And plus, you can now take that music with you in a mobile setting because you don't have to lug around those albums. So new business models are a pretty good example of how companies have, have leveraged or harnessed technology. You know, another part of this is that a lot of successful businesses, uh, and especially the new tech giants, have popped up. And where were those companies 20, 30, 40 years ago? Well, they weren't in existence. And, and some of the ones that were in existence 10, 20, 30 years ago, the technology changed their business so much and they failed to adapt, so they're gone. That's another important piece of evidence. If we look at the Fortune 500, which is the top 500 companies in terms of, of uh, their value, uh, then about half of those disappeared in, in that time period. A lot of times they merged and there were acquisitions, but it's an amazing amount of change. We've got new phenomena like social media that are being leveraged in different ways by companies. Uh, you can interact now uh, when you have a complaint about a product and hopefully get some quick feedback. Uh, there's uh, websites like Yelp and other things that allow, socially, uh, for, uh, allow us to socially share our comments so others can see our evaluations and recommendations for different vendors. Clouds, for example, are no, just, no longer just things in the sky. Uh, we leverage the cloud for how uh, data and information is stored, and we pull things down and save it without really knowing the location that it's being saved. Finally, I think the, the geopolitical borders that we had before are, are being collapsed. Uh, we can transmit across country lines uh, simply by emailing or making a cell phone call. So we really can tell there is evidence that a lot of companies have hard, uh, harnessed technologies. Now I want to tell you a little bit of story that I think that, that illustrates some of the points in your, in your textbook. Right now there's a real battle of brewing in China between two companies, Tencent and Alibaba. And they're brewing all around the nature of the digital economy. I think it's going to be a clash of titans. I want you to see if you can find information and keep an eye on it in the newspapers. Each are worth about a half a trillion dollars. They have charismatic, strong leaders, Pony Ma of Tencent and Jack Ma of Alibaba. Tencent has a, a service called WeChat, and WeChat enables uh, people to connect and, and uh, talk and uh, engage socially. And they have over one billion accounts. Alibaba is an online marketplace. 
you can think of it a little bit similar to Amazon, and it has 552 million active customers. Now, you think, what are these two doing? Why are they competing? Uh, what is getting set up? Well, the nature of their digital businesses is expanding. So Alibaba is buying stakes in uh, companies and businesses that fit with this commerce platform. Tencent, on the other hand, is taking minority stakes, in other words, buying into a lot of startup ventures so it can learn the technology from those companies and then leverage in it its own platform. So this competition is really getting heated. And one of the areas right now it's heated in is to use uh, their platforms for mobile payments. So how much longer is it going to be that we have to carry around cash? Uh, maybe our mobile phones will be our cash. And in fact, a lot of vendors already accept mobile payments. So the two of those companies both see the writing on the wall as that's the way to head. And they're going to compete like crazy for that particular market space. <coughs> so um, how Tencent is doing it, they lost, launched something called WeChat Pay as it's a way for its users to uh, exchange money. And I think what's interesting about that is they, they adapted a century-old custom in China of giving gifts on New Year's Day in a red, to a, what they call the red envelope service, where you're able to put money in this virtual red envelope and give it to someone on New Year's and, and wish them good luck. Now, that's enabled a, a major inroad in the services and the customer base that we ha they have. Similarly, Alibaba leveraged an age-old tradition of Singles Day. And now that's become one of the biggest shopping day in the world, uh, days in the world where people buy things for their significant others. So the two companies have figured out ways to grow and expand, and they're starting to really enter each other's space. In fact, they're on a collision course. So Tencent is moving into the online to offline retail market. They've introduced many apps, a lot like the apps that we see in the Apple Store. And Alibaba is even uh, starting to accuse Tencent of saying, well, some of the mobile games you offer aren't healthy for kids. So uh, things are heated up. Now, there's some things that they have in common. Both companies move incredibly quickly, they're very agile, and they plan for the long term. They really are not ready to attack the US market yet, that's something they have in common, but both of them have their sights set on Southeast Asia. Alibaba wants about two billion customers, and uh, Tencent already owns a large percentage of a company in Singapore to enable them to begin to encroach in that area. So why am I telling you this story? Well, I think this is a perfect example of companies that have harvested technologies, and now they're in a competition, the likes of uh, uh, capitalism and, and uh, competitiveness that, that's just wonderful to watch play out. And it, we continue to see examples of things like how quickly can they move to adapt a new technology, and how does it fit their, their strategy? They're probably using a lot of the same technologies. Uh, they're maybe moving on different technologies in certain areas, but of course, uh, it's how they're leveraging it, how they're harnessing it, that's going to make the difference, and we'll have to see who may, may win the biggest share. Um, basically, I, I want to also say that both companies are engaged in expansions. Uh, they lever leverage the technology to deliver the best services they can. They're moving into this cashless payments uh, pace. And overall, if you step back and look, really global business is being forever changed through this technology. And I think that's a big lesson about harnessing technology is that the change is so disruptive that oftentimes we never go back.